I think we have a story to tell in this video. A good one. Are you ready to share it? Yeah. So one year and nine months ago, we moved to Los Angeles. I took a new job and the goal was to move here to understand the customers, the sponsors, the whole thing. And then once I was fully trained, we would move to Colorado Springs. Well, the day has finally come. We are finally moving. And where are we moving to? Are we moving to Colorado Springs? Nope. We're moving to, to Kansas, Kansas City. City. <laughs> did, did we say that at the same time? I, <laughs> sure. Okay. So with Kansas City, it's obviously not Colorado Springs. Duh, Kyle. So I ended up getting a promotion at work and moved into a different part of the organization and am doing some new stuff. And they allowed me to work remotely from Kansas City. So we get to move in less than 10 days from the filming of this video. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Let's back up. Why Kansas City? Why did we say, uh, nope, not Colorado. Let's do Kansas City instead. What was the driving factor? It was family. It's a family decision. Justine's whole family lives there. I mean, and extended family and all that. I have family in Nebraska and other parts of Kansas. And our daughter gets to experience her aunts and uncles and grandparents and all the great things that go with living close to family. And then we might actually get like an occasional date night, like if grandma and grandpa or an aunt and uncle want to want to hang out with Quinn for an evening or an afternoon, huh? Okay. you know, maybe, okay. hey, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Hey, we could, we could go out on a date. Like what an idea, mm -hmm. you know, it, cause in California, the date nights were just so expensive. By the time you went out for dinner, you had a couple of drinks, you paid for the Uber, all that stuff. And then you came home and then you paid for a babysitter on top of it. It's like a three, $400 night. And it's like, yeah, geez, this is expensive. And we kind of realized that moving to Colorado would basically put us in the same situation as what we've been experiencing since living in California. We're still basically doing everything on our own and building community all over again and really hiring and help. Yeah, hiring basically. our village, if you want to call it that. Yeah, like nannies and babysitters and, and whatnot. And what we realize is like, not just that, we don't want that for Quinn. And we also realized like, the time with our parents i mean you were like not to be morbid but i mean everybody's getting older and yeah. so we want to make sure that we enjoy our time with with our families so yeah i mean the the, the math is there because right now we see our our parents twice a year maybe a little more than that but let's just say it's twice a year and then if you speak at averages we've got 15, maybe 20 years left with them. So then we're going to see them another 30 times in our lives. Like that's just a wildly low number to think about. Yeah. And we don't want that. So it's a... And our parents don't want that either. Yeah. A lot of our vacation fund was spent going back to Nebraska or Kansas City. And now we're like, well... <laughs> we get to keep that money and now we get to use it for family vacations to really fund parts of the country or even internationally, which Kyle and I have always had yeah. a high value on international travel. We were just talking about that last night with my cousins, like going to Japan was is on my bucket list. And so it's nice to know that the bulk of our vacation fund will actually be spent on seeing new places instead of going home. Right. So I have a couple of questions that I listed out here that I thought we could go over together. Okay, so we're moving to Kansas City. Did we buy a house? Almost. We put an offer in on a house. We almost did. Uh, but we backed out because it was the, the be outside of the house was beautiful. Like curb appeal was great, square footage. Uh, available space because we're both going to be working from home. So we need working spaces and living spaces and all that stuff. But we just had, it needed way too much updating. The remodeling factor there was just way too much of a price tag or dollar amount. So we, we, we walked away. We withdrew our offer. We, we didn't physically see this house in person. My parents went with the realtor and they basically FaceTimed me while they were walking through it. And honestly, don't recommend because as somebody's FaceTiming, they're going like this. <laughs> of no fault of their own. They want to show you everything. But I was like, I am getting seasick. I'm going to have to call you back. So then I realized, 
Oh, we we need to physically be there in person in order to get a sense of the community, the neighborhood, yeah. you know, what's around us and the the physical house itself. So what kind of house are we looking for? Like square footage, bedrooms, all that stuff. Oh gosh, it's gotta have enough bedrooms with a spare bedroom for guests to stay in. We gotta have two office spaces. I find gyms, like public gyms, to be really disgusting. I'm one of those germaphobes and Ugh. So I really like my own gym space. Like We talked about a finished basement with a wet bar. Yeah. With a puzzle table. We're super into jigsaw puzzles. I don't know if we it's ever weird. told you that. But we, especially <laughs> during the holidays, like fall into winter, we love doing puzzles. And Quinn has gotten into puzzles too. So yeah. it's awesome. So the houses that we're looking at are giant. I mean, we're talking like 3,500 square feet. Yeah. And the, the mortgage with taxes and everything included is cheaper than our rent we're paying right now. It's just wild. So cost of living is going to be great. I mean, one of your questions on here is like, what are, what are you going to be glad to leave behind? And the first thing I'm going to say is the high expense, the high cost of living, the high daycare costs, the high rent, the high, you know, everything, the high food prices, the, the how you got to pay for parking everywhere you go, the all that stuff. I mean, I'm definitely not going to miss that. As you're talking, like I'm now I'm starting to get emotional. And last night we went out to dinner with my cousins. I was like, I feel so numb to it. But honestly, this is like, we're filming this on Sunday and I'm leaving a, a week from now. Like I'm leaving next Sunday with Quinn. Yep. And the next question, what will you miss most about SoCal? Here for close to a decade now and... For me, it's the weather. <laughs> Sometimes I miss the heat, like those nice pool days where it's warm out. Here, it barely gets warm enough to get in the pool. Yeah, it doesn't get so hot because we're so close to the ocean. Yeah, but at the same time, it'll be February. There'll be some Arctic blast going through the Midwest. It's negative 20 degrees back home, and we're like, yeah, it's 65 here. I got a sweatshirt on and the window's open. How you doing? So... I'm going to miss that part. I'll miss the food scene. The food in LA and food in SoCal, is, there's a lot of diversity to it. and It's really tasty. What I'm going to miss the most goes even like a level deeper than that. It's when we first moved to San Diego in 2015, we moved for Kyle's job. And so I left my job in Kansas and I did not have anything lined up in San Diego yet. And I thankfully secured a marketing contractor position with a company that was in, within walking distance to our yeah. apartment downtown. Yeah, this whole time we've been a single family car for just shy of a decade. Yeah and single car family i i was very thrilled about that opportunity and that contract went for nine months and then that's like when i started pivoting into this idea and we started talking more and more about me going out on my own and doing independent marketing consulting for small businesses in san diego yeah. whether it was like writing email campaigns or doing like websites and landing pages writing blog posts all that stuff i was kind of like that one woman shop for all of that for small business business owners. And then I did that for two years, a year and a half, two years successfully. And, but it wasn't fulfilling me. I wasn't passionate about it. And then Kyle was like, well, you're really good at the personal finance side. Like, why don't, why not make a business out of that? Yep. And I was like, oh gosh, you know, I had so many self doubts. And I think that's part of like, I'm getting into that story of what I'll miss most about SoCal is because like my business was born here. Like I grew so much as a person. Yeah. It's your origin a, story. Kinda, as a business owner, business. like San Diego, was so welcoming around entrepreneurship no matter what level you were at if yeah. you were doing a startup incubator or if you were a solopreneur like myself who's like I'm a service-based remote business owner these are the things that I provide and San Diego was like yes like right on here's what we can do for you here's these meetup groups like I got to meet Pat Flynn who at the time I was just like oh my gosh fangirling out about <laughs> Which is so awesome and just all of the growth that went. And then to get pregnant in San Diego and have Quinn there, you know, becoming parents for the first time, yeah. navigating motherhood for the first time. There's just so many firsts here. And I feel like this was the perfect city to just, it felt good to just kind of have that leave Kansas behind and just start 
in this new city. And so in a way, I, I feel a little apprehension going back to Kansas City because I'm like, oh, you know, I was a different person in high school and college and, and now I'm a different person. And so Either way, it, no matter where you live it, it, for 10 years, if you're doing life, you're, you're going to have a lot of first. You're going to have a lot of new experiences. So when we go to Kansas City in the next decade that we live there, we're going to have a lot of firsts and a lot of experiences. We're going to buy our first house. I mean, that's the first thing that I yeah. think is going to be a first. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to being in Kansas City so we have the space, not having to hear my neighbors, uh, you know, stomp or slam doors or, you know, do whatever. You know, the homelessness that was in downtown San Diego was a pretty wild experience. Yeah. Um, we experienced more of that in San Diego than we do uh, here. Yeah, yeah. But in LA, always felt very like temporary. This was always just like a stopping yeah, we treated point for it that us. Way too. And so I don't feel as connected to LA because I never really like allowed myself to settle, I guess. Yeah. Like I didn't put a lot of emphasis into building relationships. However, I have a great friendship with a neighbor here and like her, her husband, her daughter, and now their newborns. It's like, I just, it makes me sad. It makes me bittersweet. You know, your, your friend and his wife and their son, like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we made some good friends here. I mean, yeah. we're cool people, so we make good friends, right? Well, yeah. I mean, come right. on. Come they don't hang out with us. Yeah. yeah. But. And maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll be the same thing in Kansas City. And like I said, oh, yeah. when we were living in Manhattan, Kansas, small town, I was like, oh, man, like we're going to get to San Diego and our best friends are going to be waiting for, there for us. And, and like how spot on was I on that prediction? Yeah, yeah like, we got lifelong friends that we have in San Diego. Yeah. Just met up with. Um, one of my really good girlfriends from San Diego, we went to Las Vegas and did a girls weekend. And now we're talking about every single year we want to do this as an annual little retreat between the great. two of us, which is great. Great. Get ready. Great. But, you know, there's going to be people in Kansas City, a couple, a family, you know, whomever. Oh, yeah. You, friends that you make, I don't know. You, you make friends wherever you go. You're too social. We're too social. Yeah. We're whatever. We'll make friends. I think the thing that's going to be the most challenging about being in Kansas City is going to be winter. I think winter's gonna come and it's gonna have you know like you have winter and then you have second winter because it's like one week where you're like wow it's 50 and this is nice and then it snows again and you're like Bruh. so i think that's gonna happen and i think also that the driving factor so here we're we're a mile to the grocery store a mile to the beach a mile to half mile to daycare half mile to costco like everything is just five ten minutes away where we're at right now i mean i walk to work so mm -hmm. everything in kansas city is going to be a 20 to 40 minute drive and we're going to spend a lot more time in the car it's much more spread out yeah. that's a fact but when you get there at least there's a spot to park <laughs> you know I we're going to be like oh parking lots gosh yeah Big I remember, grocery stores we were trying to go to la jolla for the first time and we went there we drove around for like 20 minutes just looking for a parking spot and then we finally park and then we go to the place we want to go and they're like that'll be an hour and a half wait and yeah. i was just like what am i doing with my life yeah, San Diego got a little overpopulated. I, I will say that. Yeah. I'm like, ugh, don't miss that. No. But I do miss, I was saying, uh, like, when I would wake up in the morning, because we lived in that high-rise downtown, I would wake up in the morning and walk out, and you could see a really nice, pretty uh, skyline view from, from our yeah. floor-to-ceiling windows. And I'd just say, you know, good morning, San Diego, or good night, San Diego. That was fun. Made a cool spot. Yeah. yeah, I always look back on that on this phase of life as like a great time. Absolutely. Yeah, was, we did a lot of good stuff in San Diego and SoCal. Yeah. So. Um. But yeah, life changes are tough. Like it's stressful. I mean, even if you were moving with Jesus, it would be a difficult time because it'd be like, did you get all your sandals? And they'd be like, nope. And you'd be like, okay. What are you doing? Yeah. So it's a stressful time. I'm actually gone for a week for work. I get back on Thursday night and then the movers show up Monday. So it's like, yep. oh, this is crazy. We're going through this big thing. So we're giving each other a lot of grace. We're giving Quinn a lot of leeway. We're just like, let's try to just make this as easy, as smooth as possible. Yeah. But we're going to get there. We're going to look at houses. We're trying to find daycares. We're trying to like align up, you know, storage units and all this stuff. Oh, we didn't say where we're living at, did we? No. <laughs> so we said we haven't bought a house yet. We are moving in with my parents temporarily. Mom and dad, please, please don't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> move, having your adult children move back in with you 
and their children, you know, that can be a lot under one roof. Yeah. But the main We're super grateful for them letting us move in because yeah. we don't know what we would do. We'd be living in an Airbnb or something like that. And the main reason why, because we had kind of looked at all options. Do we rent for a year and kind of just see where we want to live? Do we rent short term like an Airbnb and just kind of see what's out there? Or do we save, like max out our savings, move in with my parents temporarily? and have that light a fire under our butts so that we make that decision because we're moving end of April, early May. That's like peak housing season. And so we're like, let's just go for it. Let's yeah. see. And we are seeing work. We got hooked up with a realtor who was recommended by one of my family members there. She got us on the MLS. So we're seeing a ton of houses pop up within our search criteria. So to give you background on that, we're looking at house prices ranging between like 500 to like 650 on the high end. And the reason why we're shooting for that is we're gonna put 150 down and then that'll get our monthly mortgage payment to around what, 3,500? Yeah. Ish, depending, like depending, yeah, obviously. It's a wide range. More or less. The whole point, well, one of the major points of moving back to Kansas City is so that we can achieve financial freedom and hit financial independence a lot earlier than we ever could have done here. And so we're like, well, it doesn't even make sense to try to find a mortgage that's equivalent to the rent that we're paying now. We wanna pay less in our mortgage payment. But more. And yeah. be able to put more into home upgrades, renovations, and then also build up our investing so that we can retire retire early in our 50s. That's, that's, that's our goal. So <laughs> we're going to be saving a lot of money by moving in with my parents. However, we are footing the bill for our moving expenses. Yeah. And how much was that? So to do a U-Haul out of the state of California was like eight grand or something like that. Like something just ridiculous. And so it's because there's such an exodus out of California. They're like, well, we need trucks coming into California. So one way trips aren't more expensive, especially out. So then we said, well, what if we hired someone else to do it all? And it was only like four grand more for every for them to do everything, pack and load and unload. It was like, that's a pretty easy decision right there because we've been saving it up. So we're just taking it out of the down payment fund. And we, we kind of planned for that. We're like, okay, if we need to pay for our own move, we'll do it. It'll be worth it in the long run yeah so it's gonna be about 12 grand all in mm -hmm. so yeah it's not not terrible so Could the be better so the twelve thousand dollars includes a truck packers so they're they're gonna have people, loaders people come over and pack your stuff loaders movers unloaders and unloaders and then they're loading that into a storage unit so if you caught the last beers and budgeting episode then you probably saw a little line item for public storage so we are putting majority of our stuff into storage temporarily because yep. that was the other thing we're like oh well if we rent an apartment or a house short term or even 12 months we got to unpack everything for Re a year it. and then repack it and then move it again ourselves and we're like ah, oh, what a pain in the ass so we're gonna have this as the solution my dad has a truck and access to a trailer, we could hire, we could do a U, smaller U-Haul truck ourselves can, and then just move it across town. So that all said, we've got that going. What are you looking forward to in Kansas City? Oh, just the, the space. The space. <laughs> Not having to hear my neighbors. Yeah, that's the big one. Space. I assume wherever you live, you always got someone with a barking dog and things that just part about living in a neighborhood. Being close to family, yeah, obviously, that's a big family. one. Yeah. Like, it's gonna feel so weird to be like, hey, mom and dad, like, we'll come over for a Sunday barbecue. Do you guys wanna come over here and like hang out? Or like, my youngest sister lives there with her fiance and it's like, wanna do a double date too? Yeah. With a, you know, jazz, like jazz club yeah. and hang out. Like, that, it'd be cool. That's gonna feel so weird, but it's gonna be really cool. Kansas City's food scene, I feel like, has really popped yeah. up, grown. Obviously the professional sports has grown since the Chiefs have grown in popularity. Summer, like hot summers again. Yeah. Thunderstorms. Oh yeah, storms. That'll be so nice. It thundered one time here in LA in the past year and a half. That change from summer to fall. Just love that, love fall. Yeah. Just cost of living is just gonna be so great. We're gonna be like, wow, and we gotta be careful about that because I think we're gonna wanna spend more money because we're like, wow, the beers here are only $5, great. Like, we'll buy for everybody. <laughs> That's gonna happen. That's why we have a budget. 
Yeah. Baseball games, soccer games. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of things to do. Yeah. A lot to explore because the city has grown a lot since I lived there. And I haven't lived there since I was 22. The first year after I graduated. Yeah. So crazy. Anything else? No. Let's go pack some boxes. <laughs> pack some boxes. Thanks for joining and watching this video. This is the first time that you're seeing something like this from my channel. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button. We share a lot of personal finance tips, yeah. a lot of our own personal finance journey in hopes to inspire you to pay off your debt, to hit your, your financial goals, wherever you may be at in that cycle or in that journey. Like I hope you just become part of the family here. And thank you so much for your support and I'm sure you're like, wow, Kansas City, what? I thought you guys were going to Colorado. Surprise. It's a surprise for us too, because Kyle was the one who was like, I think we should move to Kansas City. And I was like, uh, what? Yeah, that was my idea. That was his idea. And, I was, and it took me a while to get used to, because I had pretty much like said, we're not doing that. And so it kind of reopened that and helped me rethink what life would look like for the next 10, 15 plus years. Yep. All right. We'll see you guys in <laughs> Kansas City. We'll see you in Kansas City. You're not going to see the same backdrop with our neighbor's apartment building over there. Yeah. Did you know that? I'm sure you did. Who knows? I don't know what that's going to look like short term, but bear with us while I try to figure out what the recording studio looks like. And um, I hope you stick around. <laughs> <laughs>